The more and more Luke and I play through Halo, the more and more we start to come up with weird theories as to what's going on in these games that end with some of the results that we've experienced along the way. Our most recent theory is that when Bungie was developing Halo, their code across all of their games was pretty much this large and intricate spaghetti code linking all of the game's functions together. And when 343 rolled around, they were tasked with making a seven layer lasagna out of Bungie's spaghetti code, and somehow we got the Master Chief Collection. And you know what happens when you try to mix two pastas together? I don't know, I'm getting a little sidetracked. So we thought, let's take a look at some of these glitches that cause Halo to completely break and crash. What would happen if we set out just to try to crash Halo wherever we could? Well, this is what happened. Well, where else to look than Halo 2 with the Scarab Skull enabled right off the get-go. And to start off, jumping onto the level Gravemind, you have these brutes with plasma rifles right at the start. And if you kill the first brutes and then pick up the brute plasma rifle, the game just crashes on the first shot. Now, honestly, this was just a takeaway that we already knew about. So it was pretty easy, but some of the things that we had to do to break the other Halo games in the MCC were way more extreme. But this was a good way to kind of get our feet a little wet into the rest of the this quest. Now this was another one that we knew about because our boy from the Kikawani squad, Dim Entree, had this happen when he was trying to speedrun Halo 2 a while back, but essentially if you load up on the level Uprising on Legendary Difficulty and just kind of hurry along and play through the game, there's a 90% chance that the game is just going to crash at the end on the last cutscene. Luke joined in a game with Dim to test this one out to see if we could get footage of it crashing and first try it decides to crash. We honestly have no clue why this happens, but hey, it's another Another entry for this video. This is one that I personally have experienced multiple times, so I thought of this one right away, but in Halo 3, if you play on the last level and one player stays AFK after the boss fight, while another player just walks ahead and starts going up towards the next area you're supposed to head to, after hitting a loading sequence, the game, in theory, is supposed to teleport the player that is AFK onto the player that's moving ahead forward, but instead, the game doesn't seem to be able to properly do the teleport and despawn and it doesn't really know how to react so it just outright crashes. However, one thing that's super interesting about this glitch that stands out against all the other crashes that we experienced when getting stuff for this video is that when the game crashes it actually crashes on some sub Halo 3 level and not on the larger MCC level. When you get the error message that the level crash it actually is using the old Halo 3 title and font that pops up on your screen and while you do disconnect you still are in the Master Chief collection. So it seems like whatever function or whatever engine that's running in the MCC that runs Halo 3 breaks down, but the larger MCC keeps on going. And this isn't something you typically see, but it's cool to see that old Halo 3 font once again in the MCC. This leads us to believe that this is in fact a Halo 3 crash just happening in the MCC port and not an MCC issue, but it is really interesting nonetheless. In Halo 3 Forge, if you are in editor mode and you grab a weapon at the same time as a player, you actually have some level of control over the weapon and you can start rotating it and get some pretty hilarious effects along the way. However, if you use something like a missile launcher and rotate it and get this weird crazy spinning animation and then the player who has the missile launcher decides to shoot it, it's actually going to cause the whole game to completely crash because the game doesn't know what to do and what it's even trying to shoot and it was really weird when this happened to us. But Forge definitely becomes this common denominator when you look at Halo and things that couldn't crash because when you're looking at Forge as a whole you kind of have this large sandbox to mess around with things and see how far you can push Halo until it just decides to not work anymore. Halo 4 Forge was actually one of those that was pretty fun to mess around with surprisingly and you guys say we never play Halo 4 enough well here's a Halo 4 challenge we tried to crash this one essentially we were getting pretty close with just having a ton of stuff on the screen at the same time lots of explosions and just messing around with the Forge objects but things got really real wild when I started spawning in a grid and trying to force things to explode at the same time and respawn over and over again. And while we couldn't quite get it to crash and we knew we were getting close, we did succeed at letting Halo 4 crash when I started just spinning the grid like crazy, launching objects in the air, killing Luke multiple times until finally Halo 4 just completely died on us and we were out of that one as well. Always good to show Halo 4 some love. And we did go into Halo 5 to see 
if we can mess around with the forge mode in there because of all of the different things that were put into forge all the different effects and honestly we thought this one would be pretty easy just because you're able to overload how many effects you have you can see exactly how much you're using as you go along with it however surprisingly halo 5's forge is pretty tanky and it's kind of difficult to overload forge mode to the point of crashing we could get the frame rates down really low we could make some bizarre stuff happen visually but at the end of the day we couldn't quite push halo 5 until we changed up the map a little bit and decided to you know bring back the good old grids and see what could happen now we don't know exactly what triggered the crash that we did have happen in halo 5 but we think it's a mix of this pile of explosions that luke was working on this pelican that i spawned with normal physics that kept trying to clip through everything and then this giant grid that i brought into the level and started spinning at the same time as luke was trying to blow stuff up but eventually we got there and halo 5 guardians crashed as well kind of jumping back a little bit to halo reach the level the pillar of autumn actually has a couple of things you can do to potentially crash your game altogether. now this next one is a little bit tedious but you know what it was an experience to say the least not gonna say great not gonna say with the worst but it was an experience essentially if you're in single player only we got to reiterate that because we tried it in co-op and it didn't work at first if you drive your mongoose down this section where the scarabs are and drive all the way through it till the end of the area where you would see another mongoose then drive your mongoose all the way back up the hill when you reach the top of the hill a second mongoose will spawn in every single location that there's a mongoose in that area and if you keep driving back and forth over and over again more mongooses will continue to spawn in those places until you have like three or four piles of mongooses just kind of laying around in this area now our boys over at halo creation had posted something on twitter where they had done this for a very very long time and had this massive massive inventory of mongooses and then their game crashed so we were going for that and we spent about an hour in our own games driving up and down this hill just getting more and more mongooses and unfortunately enough our game never actually crashed we were really disappointed in an interesting way and we assume if we would have kept going maybe for another hour or two we would have gotten there but at that point we kind of wanted the video to go out this week but we know for a fact from halo creation that, that yeah this glitch definitely can cause your game to crash but if you want a more surefire way to crash your game in halo reach on the pillar of autumn there's this really interesting trick that one of our users on discord joined up with us on to help us figure out but at the beginning of the level if you get a mongoose and drive it back to the beginning you can actually launch it up onto the cliff with a concussion rifle now on this level there's a certain amount of time where a checkpoint will automatically occur so you can actually utilize these checkpoints to make sure that you're progressing through this glitch as you go along but there definitely is some precision that goes into this having to launch the mongoose up the right side of the mountain and make sure it doesn't fall off or doesn't go the wrong way once the mongoose is up on the mountain you'll have to use the concussion rifle to launch yourself up onto the mountain as well and then a second player will need to spawn up there with the player who has the concussion rifle while a third player continues a little further along in the level and drives up to this section essentially where there are two rocks by a truck meanwhile the two players on the top need to get up onto this invisible ceiling barrier and from there once everyone's in position essentially everyone does a little bit of a different thing at the same time player two needs to slide down some rocks on the back of the map player three has to progress a little bit further into the level and if during this process player two walks forward to load the next part of the level the game just completely falls apart and crashes it's definitely something to do with the loading manipulation where the game can't figure out what part it's supposed to load because it's trying to load multiple things at the same time and by glitching outside of the map to get around you're not going in the linear fashion the game would expect and everything kind of just falls apart and it just ends itself on the level long night of solace there was another glitch that we were able to pull off this one was a little bit weirder if you played through the level like normal killing some enemies along the way and get up to the area where you are in outer space after you clear all the space enemies and they're wanting you to come in and land your saber for the first time one player has to either park in a corner or just free fly for a while while all the other players have to crash their sabers and then immediately upon respawning hold down the action button and jump out of their saber you have to get the timing down perfectly when you're jumping out of the saber and it was something that took me a little bit of practice but I did get it down after a while where you kind of have to predict exactly how long it takes when you typically hold down the action button and start doing it from that exact amount of time before you respawn so that in the first split second 
second of you being spawned, you can actually jump out. But essentially, if you do that enough times, the game will overload and things will start to get a little bit weird. Now, we did have a few problems when we first started trying to do this glitch, where essentially when we went for the mechanic where we would hide in a corner and have two people jumping out, oftentimes if the people who were jumping out of their saber didn't jump out early enough, there was a chance that you'd be respawning right on the player who's the respawn point and you might crash your saber into them and end the checkpoint forcing a revert. So what we did was we went for the free floating method where we just had Luke as the respawn point flying around while we kind of avoided crashing into him as we tried to jump out of our sabers quick enough. Now by us jumping out of our saber instead of crashing our sabers, our sabers actually won't despawn because they never exploded or were destroyed in the first place. So the game starts to face a heavy load when there's all of these vehicles kind of in the vicinity of the level that technically haven't been destroyed or despawned. After we had done this for a while and we probably had well over 50 to 100 sabers free floating around in the level, we then went back to the original plan where Luke would force his saber in a corner and we would try to jump out without crashing our sabers into him. And within just a few minutes of switching to this strategy, our game crashed right away. It's probably something to do with the sabers being in a close vicinity of the main area. But yeah, this was a weird one, but we really didn't think it was going to work. So you should have heard our excitement that we had when we finally had our game completely fail and crash on us. Honestly, what is our life at this point? And honestly, there's so many different moments, especially in the Master Chief Collection, where the game will just crash on you for no reason. That's part of the Master Chief experience. It's not a glitch. It's a feature. But we thought there was one more we really wanted to attempt that we thought would be a really good and interesting one to see what exactly happens. Now on the Halo 3 level, the Covenant, there's this glitch that's been kind of circulating around where essentially if the players jump in Hornets, fly to the middle area and blow up some of the Banshees and then have one player stay behind on the island without any vehicle, you have to destroy their Hornet that they came in with. And the other player flies to the second tower with his Hornet and lands it up there and then jumps off and kills himself. The game actually is set to give players a backup or emergency Hornet that will come and fly in. Now, essentially, there's no limit on how many times you can do this. So as the player jumps off the edge and respawns on the middle island, stranded with player one, that second player can just jump in a Hornet and fly it back up there, leaving the newly dropped off Marine behind. And if you keep doing this over and over and over and over again, eventually you have a huge army of Marines just chilling there. I guess they're technically ODSTs, I think. Halo lore experts, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know, they're green. They're a little different than the normal ODSTs we're used to. So we spent about six hours in total trying this glitch between three different occasions, and our results were very varied along the way and interesting each time we did it. The first time we did it, it took a lot of trial and error just getting it set up to figure out exactly how it worked. Sometimes it seemed like the Hornets would be coming and then they would stop all of a sudden. While this was happening, Luke and I realized that if we both are aiming up at the second tower and not looking in the direction of the Hornet, the Hornets would come more often and would spawn. It's almost like the Hornets are too shy to spawn when you're looking at them, so you have to kind of give them some privacy for a second and then they'll fly in. We did this for a really, really long time. I did accidentally get splattered one time by the Hornets, so we had to start all over and that was fun. But after doing this for quite some time and we had a decent sized army around us, we had a lot of weird visual glitches happen. Weapons were completely despawning or just flickering and the map was really starting to smear in the background. Eventually got to the point where the Hornets stopped having pilots because the game loaded in the maximum amount of player models possible, which also meant that if one of us ended up dying, we would be unable to respawn unless we sacrificed one of the ODSTs that we had. It was really interesting though that when the players stopped spawning, the Hornets would continue to come for a little while and we would just see a Hornet free falling out of the sky since there was no one to pilot it in. And the Hornets don't explode when they're in the water either, so it does mess with the spawning a bit. So despite all of this, we tried multiple times to figure something out, but this one was a bust for getting the game to actually crash. Now I came back later to this, which we didn't get footage of, and ran it again for another two hours or so with mostly similar results. The only unique thing that really happened was I tried to progress forward and backwards in the level to see if anything different happened, and honestly nothing really different happened. If you progress further back and it deloads the area and I moved back into it, all of the marines would still be there when I got back, but if you progress 
too far in the level and you try to go back, you can't really make your way back to that section without maybe doing some really confusing time travel glitch. Trial three, we came around with four players this time, hoping for better results. And it was funny trying to teach this glitch to two people who've never experienced it before and have to explain to them the logistics of why you had to stare away at the tower so that you could give the Hornet some privacy. But honestly, even with us doing this much faster with four people, the only different thing that happened is one of the ODSTs randomly dropped in without a helmet. Yeah, don't really know why he did it. He was just kind of chilling, but that was interesting. This time around, we spent more time messing around with the Hornets, thinking that maybe if we had enough Hornets on the map, it could cause a crash or an overload. So we really tried to focus on getting the Hornets all up in one area, stacking them, really getting close, having our games freeze constantly, but we had no luck. Now the guys over at Halo Creation, we messaged them about it and they said that their game crashed every time they tried it. So we don't know what we were doing wrong or why our Halos decided to not crash, but apparently more often than not, if you do this glitch for a long time, it's supposed to crash. We didn't get it to crash. We were really disappointed in this one because we thought it would be great for the video, but we would really like to know if you guys can try this one since it's not too hard to set up. See if you can actually push your Xbox to the limit and make it crash because we don't know what we're doing wrong. Also, there's probably a ton of other crashes that we've missed. So, I mean, are you guys really surprised? <laughs> but hey, if you liked this video, can you take a quick moment first Double check you are in fact subscribed down below with notifications on. It helps us out a lot. We get to do more stuff like this and that's cool. Also, if you want to talk with us on Twitter, you can follow me at Rocket Elijah and you can also follow Luke at Rocket Sloth Luke. So feel free to follow us on there and communicate with us a bit. We would kind of appreciate it. But otherwise, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you all next time.